Did you know that Bitcoin accounts for nearly half of the value of the entire crypto market? It is by far the biggest cryptocurrency in the world and is often seen as the gold standard in the industry. Having said that, it's difficult to give a simple and straightforward definition of what Bitcoin is today. However, when the coin was invented in 2009, the idea was for it to become a digital currency that would help facilitate peer-to-peer -peer transactions across the world. It's fair to say that over the last decade or so, Bitcoin has evolved beyond this initial concept though. It is now seen as an investable asset class and even to some extent a store of value similar to the way gold and silver are viewed. Importantly, Bitcoin has also paved the way for revolutionary blockchain technology to attempt to transform traditional finance. So that's the initial concept down, but what about going deeper? Let's take a look at Bitcoin's functionality. To understand Bitcoin's functionality, I think it's important to briefly look at how traditional fiat currency works. Let's take the example of the US dollar. Dollars are issued by the United States Federal Reserve. The purpose of the dollar is to make transactions both in the US and abroad while also acting as a store of value. So in essence, if you have say $1,000, it means that you could use that money in exchange for goods and services of that value. Furthermore, the $1,000 represents a certain stored value that could be transferred to someone else or kept in a bank for future use. And with traditional fiat defined, how does Bitcoin compare with traditional money? Well, just like the US dollar, Bitcoin can be used for transactions, although in a much more limited manner just now. This is because of less adoption by mainstream users. In this situation, it means there are less places, shops and so on, where you can actually use Bitcoin to pay for things. Now, Bitcoin can also be used as a store of value to some degree, although it is subject to more volatility. As Bitcoin is a relatively new currency out there, it is more easily subject to shifts in value, which might put some people off, again, affecting adoption. The biggest difference, though, is that unlike the US dollar, Bitcoin is decentralized and doesn't have a central governing entity like the Federal Reserve. Decentralized just means that something is spread out over a network, without a specific center. Compared to dollars which can only be used in a centralized banking system, Bitcoins can be stored and transferred globally through its decentralized blockchain. This blockchain is a kind of digitized public ledger which stores all the transactions across a large computer network. With these basics out of the way, how else is Bitcoin different anyway? Moving on, what makes Bitcoin unique? In the beginning, Bitcoin was launched in 2009 by an anonymous developer named Satoshi Nakamoto. Its workings were covered extensively in a white paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, published on Bitcoin.org in the same year. As the title suggests, the creator's vision was to build a peer-to-peer -peer payment system that allowed people to transact with each other directly. This was a novel concept, in direct contrast to traditional finance, which uses third parties like banks to make transactions. Now, interestingly, when Bitcoin launched, the total supply of coins was hard-coded to be capped at 21 million. This means that only 21 million Bitcoins will ever exist. It's believed that Satoshi Nakamoto mined around 1 million Bitcoins during the initial phases of the project, probably using a desktop computer. As the years have gone by though, Bitcoin mining has become intentionally more difficult. The reasons for why are coming up later in this video. At any rate, you would need to expend a lot more resources today to mine a single Bitcoin compared to those initial million. So how many Bitcoins are out there already? Well, according to data from CoinMarketCap.com, at the time of this video, there are 19 million Bitcoins in circulation. There are still 2 million coins that are yet to be mined and released into the market. At face value, you might assume that it won't take long before these next 2 million coins are mined, right? However, there's one more trick up Bitcoin's sleeve. Essentially, the mining difficulty automatically adjusts itself to remain constant over time. Nevertheless, mining Bitcoin has become harder and harder over time and will do so in the future. In fact, it is estimated that the full supply of 21 million Bitcoins will be reached in 2140. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. But since I'm talking so much about mining, how does Bitcoin mining work anyway? While Bitcoin mining can seem complex, at its core, it's just a process by which new Bitcoins are added to the circulating supply. Think of it like gold mining, but where everything is digital. Instead of physically searching for gold, miners use powerful computers to solve complex mathematical puzzles. Do you remember the Bitcoin blockchain too? 
It's a decentralized ledger that records every Bitcoin transaction ever made. Now, each transaction needs to be properly verified to prevent fraud and double spending. It's this verification which is done by the decentralized computers spread around the world. This is where mining comes in. Miners use their hardware processing power to group new transactions into blocks and then solve a mathematical puzzle to add these blocks to the blockchain. The first miner to solve the puzzle gets to add the block and, in return, is rewarded with newly minted bitcoins. Furthermore, roughly every four years, an event called the halvening takes place. This event cuts the reward for mining new blocks in half. Initially, the reward was 50 bitcoins for each block mined. After the first halvening, it became 25, then 12.5, and so on. This mechanism ensures that the total number of bitcoins will never exceed 21 million. So, in essence, Bitcoin mining has two main purposes. It introduces new Bitcoins into the system and it secures the network by validating and verifying every transaction. By participating in this process, miners play a crucial role in upholding the transparency and trustworthiness of the Bitcoin network. Sounds pretty cool, right? So, how can this technology really change the world? Let's explore Bitcoin's potential in the global economy. First, Bitcoin is changing how people view money. It's true that the adoption of digital currencies is not as widespread as traditional fiat currencies. However, there is a growing realization that money doesn't have to be physical or centralized. In addition, Bitcoin has opened the door for innovation by using blockchain technology. Thanks to Bitcoin, we now have seen major developments around the use of decentralized technology in the financial transactions around the world, even in sectors such as gaming. But is Bitcoin the future of money? Well, for all its benefits, the penetration of Bitcoin as a digital currency is still modest compared to traditional fiat money. There is growing pressure from governments worldwide to regulate Bitcoin in some way, and this could cause the coin to lose some of its attraction. Besides, there are still some crucial problems with Bitcoin too. Its limited acceptance as a form of payment slows down its adoption as a mainstream currency. Finally, while its core principles are quite straightforward, Bitcoin can appear quite complex on the surface. With aspects like blockchain technology, wallet management, and private key security, the average user can often feel unsure about how best to approach it. Nevertheless, it looks like Bitcoin is here to stay and should become globally more influential in the future. To recap, today I guided you through Bitcoin's digital universe from its 2009 birth as an ambitious peer-to-peer -peer currency to its status today, challenging global finance. You explored how Bitcoin can be both a medium of exchange and a store of value, with a decentralized spirit that makes it truly unique. I also uncovered the fine details of Bitcoin mining and its role in the system's security. You've seen Bitcoin's broader influence, from reshaping how people think about money, all the way to bringing in decentralized innovations across different industries. While it's not without hurdles like regulation and adoption, Bitcoin's impact is serious and here to stay. As I wrap up this video, I hope you remember that Bitcoin is a kind of philosophy, representing a world where autonomy and transparency reign. Well, you're now equipped with insights into this fantastic new crypto world, ready to engage and explore further. Before you go, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you soon.